Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd Ahabbat fillah continuing on in our study of the treaties the difference between advising and condemning by Imam Ibn Rajab Al Hafid Ibn Rajab rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatun wasi'ah he said however if there is found in this mentioning meaning mentioning the the sin, uh, the sins or the mistakes or the bid'ah of someone a beneficial good for the general masses of Muslims, specifically for some of them, and the objective behind it is to accomplish this beneficial goal, then it is not forbidden, but rather recommended. And you'll find, uh, as we mentioned before, in the books of Ima uh, in, uh, Imam Manawi, and way before Imam Manawi, the scholars of Hadith and the, the Imams of Ahl Sunnah throughout time refuted Ahl Bid'ah and mentioned their mistakes publicly, and advised people, and refuted people, and uh, etc., and warned against people. Because this is the way and means to protect the religion, so we should never get personally caught up unless someone is going beyond the bounds, and, and their intention is not pure, which is difficult. We can't cut the hearts of the people open to understand if their intention is not pure. But sometimes you can see signs that someone is refuting someone in order to make themselves bigger or they're making something out of nothing and they're not in fact defending the religion but they're defending themselves they are defending uh they're trying to raise themselves up uh they are uh you know they're just because they're jealous of someone or hasid sometimes you can detect these types of things from individuals so it's very important and something else i want to mention as many or uh mention is the difference between refuting Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bidah. The Ahl Bidah, that you don't necessarily maintain uh, a level of respect for them. If the person's usul, their foundation, that they are going against the minhaj and methodology and aqidah of Ahl Sunnah in many ways, or that they are doing that based on their desires, or their, their, you know, it's widespread and they are uh, very active in opposing uh, the dawah, dawah to Ahl Sunnah, then this person, you don't have to necessarily give the same respect and, and so forth. does not mean you can lie about them. It does not mean you can speak ill and, and talk about their personal character, their looks, their race, whatever. No. But in fact, they do not gain, res you, they do not have your respect because they're khalis min Ahl Bidah. But the one who is a Sunni, Meaning a Sunni from Ahl Sunnah will jama'ah following Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the methodology of the Salaf, then you maintain respect. You may have beef, as as we see many of our brothers. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we have so much beef, and there's better words than beef, but this is something we can all understand, especially from America. We have beef between many of the du'at, du'at to Ahl Sunnah, du'at to Salafiyun, but yet we've divided because this one. Uh, said, spoke about this sheikh, this one didn't make a clear enough statement about this sheikh, this one quoted from this sheikh, and people do not know how to deal with differences. They do not know how, and sometimes there's personal issues involved. I think we'll bring this brother down. Let's take this brother's uh, speech to sheikh so-and-so and sheikh so-and-so so we can get a speech so we can belittle him and we can tear him away from the hearts of Ahl Sunnah and we can tear him away from the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. So people begin to tear one another down. So you have to question their, uh, their intention. And this is a great evil that has spread and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us and guides us and our brothers and sisters back to the haq and protects us from being too soft and from being too harsh because neither of those poles are good places to be. So Imam Ibn Rajib, uh, have, uh, Rahmatullah alayhi, he said, the scholars of Hadith have agreed with this principle in their books on the subject of Jarwa Ta'deel and they have mentioned that there is a difference between criticizing Hadith reporters and backbiting them. And they further refuted those who placed these two categories at the same level, such as those who constantly engulfed in worship all the time as well as others who do not possess sufficient knowledge. This is absolutely imperative for us to break this down. So uh, first and foremost, we have to have an understanding. Jarwa Ta'deel is the Islamic science of determining whose reports and testimonies are to be accepted and whose are not. Those who fall under the category of Jarrah uh, uh, are the ones who are criticized. 
and discredited, such as weak narrators and liars and so forth. Those who fall under the category of ta'dil are those whom the scholars have approved of and considered reliable in speech and trustworthy in narration. So it's very important. That's pertaining to the science of hadith. But also, these principles are have an applicability with how we deal with one another, that we, uh, as far as criticizing and as far as praising individuals, that's why we should never be excessive in praising people, we should not be excessive in criticizing people, even from someone from Ahl Bidah, even from someone from Ahl Bidah, because you don't know, maybe they will make toba and maybe they'll come back and they will be your brother and you won't have it in your heart because you spoke so harshly against them and maybe said evil things about them that you will not be able to go back from your speech because you'll have too much pride. And by Allah, I've seen this. We've seen it many times, even amongst Mashaikh. We know people who we considered from our ulama, who fell into some extremism. And some of the things they said about some of the other Mashaikh, saying that they were, so-and-so is like a dog, or the son of a dog, or, or, or he's uh, uh, Ibn Iblis, the son of Iblis, or whatever. Things like this, such strong statements, that if that person makes toba. How will this individual be able to even relate to them? And, and how, will, how will they be able to establish the, the love between Ahlul Sunnah? Because one person has went so far in his criticism, speaking so harsh against another individual, instead of leaving things to the Hadood, leaving things to the Islamic boundaries, and not going beyond those boundaries, and not being too excessive and excessive in one's hatred. So it's very important for us to strive to have that balance as best as we can. And uh, an important thing uh, half of the Ibn Rajab said, and they further refuted those who replaced these two categories at the same level, meaning those people who, uh, you know, who were, uh, who, who basically ignored those categories or that they made, uh, you know, they, they, they uh, refused to, uh, to speak about innovators when they had the ability and the knowledge to, you know, or they reject that science altogether in those kawaii that defended the religion. And then those people who are excessive in that. All of those things are negative. And Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Hadith, they refuted those people. They refuted those people who made backbiting and advising the same. Because in fact, it's two different things. One is mithmum, one is negative, and the other one is positive. That the Prophet ﷺ said, Adin and Nasiha. The religion is sincere advice. So you have to advise your brother when he's making a mistake. And even if he's from Ahl Bidah, it doesn't harm you to give them advice if you have the ability uh, to do so. And Ibn Rajab also said, and they further refuted those who placed those two categories at the same level, such as those who constantly. Uh, engulfed in worship, meaning those are bad, those uh, people who worship, all they do is worship, and alhamdulillah, this is a great na'man, and having taqwa and fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they were only involved in, they were excessive in a sense, in their worship, and they, they perhaps didn't give uh, importance to knowledge, so some people they worship Allah, but not Allah basira. And it's also important to have knowledge in these issues. So not everyone should get involved in these issues. And as we've read on countless times, and let's see if we can find a statement by Imam uh, Imam uh, Fozan, Havadullah Ta'ala, he said, and this is a beautiful statement, and it's very relevant to what we're studying here. He said, لا ينبغي لطلبة المبتدئين وغيرهم من العام أن يشتغلوا بتبديع وتفسيق لأن ذلك أمر خطير وهم ليس عندهم علم ودراية في هذا الموضوع وأيضا هذا يحدث العداوة وبغضاء بينهم فالواجب عليهم فالواجب عليهم الاشتغال بطلب العلم وكفل سنتهم عما لا فائدة فيه بل فيه مضرة Alayhim wa ala ghayrihim. Very important, ahabit fillah. So Imam uh, Fozan said, It is not permissible for the beginning student of knowledge, or other than them, from the general Muslims, from the uh, awam, to busy themselves with uh, declaring people to be innovators, and to declare people to be fasiks, and also likewise with takfir, of course, min baba ola. 
And he said, Liana Vatica, Emron Khatib, because this is a dangerous issue. This is a dangerous affair. And they don't have the knowledge. And they don't have the cognizant or the, the ability to go into the source and the text and the understanding of, 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 of and, and, and the, the, the methodology of how to do uh, uh, make behoof and so forth in, in this issue. Also, this brings about enmity and hatred between them if they get involved in this. So it's an obligation upon them to busy themselves with seeking knowledge and restraining their tongues on those things which there's no benefit for them in it. Rather, instead, it is harmful and is harmful to others from them. Meaning if people don't have the ability, they don't have the knowledge, don't get involved in these affairs about us uh, speaking about Ahl al and trying to refute people because you need ilm and you need fiqh fideen. And what 